G'day everyone, David Bayless here from BM Pro and today we're going to delve into a new series on our BM Pro Invicta batteries. Now we've just started supplying the lithium batteries into the market and they've been taken up with great gusto. People are really getting into it, which is fantastic. We've upgraded some of our chargers so they work really well with the batteries. Now we've brought along Ryan Hammond. Welcome Ryan. So Thanks, Ryan's David. an expert on batteries and he's gonna talk us through the batteries today. He's gonna to talk us through the Invicta batteries. We're gonna run a bit of a series here, a six part series on various different aspects of the lithium batteries. Cause there's a lot of things out there that people really don't know, do they? So no, um, now Ryan, lithium batteries, there's different types of lithium batteries depending upon the application. So this is a different type of lithium battery to say what's in the back of a phone, isn't it? Correct, yep. So uh, this, this one specifically is lithium ion phosphate. Yep. Uh, under the lithium ion umbrella, there's many different chemistries or flavors of lithium, if you like. Each one has different characteristics that uh, make them more or less suitable for the different applications. Right. So example, an electric vehicle, uh, quite often they use a NMC technology, which is uh, a lighter for the same um, capacity, if you like. Right. Uh, as I mentioned, we use lithium ion phosphate in our uh, Invicta range uh, because it's the, the safest of all the, the lithium chemistries. Yeah. And it uh, covers the wider range of applications. Right. So, you know, lithium batteries have come now into the market, into the RV space, but they look exactly the same, what they are shape wise, as a normal lead acid battery, like your AGMs or your gel. They're obviously lighter. I mean, these things are weighing about 12, 13 kilos compared to between 25 to 30 kilos for an equivalent lead acid battery. But why is lithium ion phosphate a good drop in for deep cycle applications? Yeah, so there's a, a couple of main reasons for that. One is the safety aspect. As mm -hmm. I mentioned before, uh, the lithium ion phosphate is the safest of all uh, technologies. So that's exactly what you want when it's going into your RV. Yeah. So that's point one. The other one is the, uh, the cell voltage. So the cell voltage of a lithium ion phosphate cell mm -hmm. is 3.2 volts mm -hmm. per cell. So yep. four times uh, 3.2 is 12.8, so the nominal voltage of your lithium ion phosphate is very similar to that of an equivalent AGM battery. Right, okay, nice. So we've got four cells built in here, internal inside the battery, so obviously different to a lead acid battery. Yeah, So correct. a lead acid battery is a different structure, isn't it? Yeah, correct. So in, uh, in a lead, lead acid battery, they're, uh, they're normally two volt um, cells, for mm -hmm. want of a better word, yeah. uh, made up of uh, to 12 volts. Mm -hmm. With the lithium ion phosphate, 3.2 volts per cell, uh, four in series, yep. and then depending on the capacity of the cell, uh, builds up the, the capacity of the battery. So the beauty of the lithium ion phosphate batteries is we can actually see inside. Well, you can't at a consumer level, but at a manufacturing level you can, whereas with a lead acid battery, it's sort of a, a sealed box of voodoo, isn't it? You Correct. sort of really don't know what's going on there, and you've got to rely upon the chemistry and the plates and everything going, um, you know, going well. But here, obviously, with this, we're monitoring everything which is going on because we've got a, a BMS over the top of it, and uh, we can actually see what's going on inside of all those cells. Yep, correct. And we use, uh, these cells you'll notice are a prismatic cell. So there's also different types of uh, cells yep. in terms of lithium ion phosphate. The most um, well-known probably is the cylindrical cell. Which yep, is the a, small ones. Yep, yep. that's it. Uh, very similar to a AA battery or AAA battery. Uh, obviously, you need a lot of those yep. uh, to build up a, a capacity like this one, which is 125 amp hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the prismatic, you'll see here that they're a, a, an aluminium case prismatic cell, yep. so they're very robust. They're quite high capacity, so 25 amp hours uh, per cell. So you need less of them right. to, to build up a 100 or 125 amp hour capacity. And it works cell. out very conveniently, doesn't it? That it can just literally be a drop in replacement. Correct. So in that RV space, you know, normally the batteries are being installed underneath the, the couch or you know the bottom of a cupboard somewhere. In fact, some of them I've now seen uh, putting them on the outside of the vans, which is great. But it's the same size, so it all just fits directly in. So, yeah. But these ones are designed just as a deep cycle lead acid replacement. They're not designed as a cranking battery, these ones, are they? Correct. Yep, so uh, these cells are specifically designed for, for deep cycle yep. applications, and as such, you get the benefits and the extra long cycle life yep. of, uh, of deep cycle cells. Yep. Which we'll go into in another one, so we can actually discharge these a lot further down than what we can on the, uh, on the lead acid. Correct. So we just touched on before that there's different types of cells in here, so we've got four cells in here. And over in the uh, lead acid batteries, well, not this one, but over in the lead acid battery, we've got a, um, lots of lead cells and everything else like that going on. So, but there's a different way the energy is created inside these two different batteries, isn't there? Between a lithium and a lead acid, the energy is created differently. Correct. So in a, in a lead acid, during the charge and recharge cycle, 
the, the battery goes through a chemical reaction. Right. Whereas with a, a lithium ion phosphate, uh, through the charge and discharge cycle, it goes through an ion transfer. Right. And that there, that is part of the reason why you get such a, an increase in cycle life, mm -hmm. because the degradation during your charge and recharge cycle is, a, is reduced. Right. So there you have it. That's a little bit of an overview on the basics of lithium batteries. And in the next parts of the series, we're going to talk about the physical nature, the amount of available energy, safety aspects and things like that. So look out for the rest of the series. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an introduction as to what's on the insides of lithium batteries and debunked some of these, this voodoo which is out there about lithium. See you next time.